So for five days, since last Tuesday, myself and 11 other members of staff decided we would lock ourselves in to the retirement home, basically to try and save the lives of our residents and possibly our staff. So the coronavirus has been creeping slowly towards us. People have been dying in their thousands. We were starting to hear reports of people dying in local care homes. So we just decided to shut up shop. It was the only way we felt we could keep our residents safe. Mm, I've set up camp down in the pharmacy, in the old pharmacy, which has been pretty chilly due to our numbers now being short. Myself and Julie are having to do the night shift tomorrow night. So I'm going to try and get some kip now. Um, so make sure I'm well rested for tomorrow night. I haven't done a night shift for a while. Needs must. Um, I also had a bath today. Don't tell anybody, but that's the first bath or shower I've had a chance to have since we've been here. So that's mm, six days. So um, good tide mark there. But we've had so much support from the outside world it's been absolutely fantastic yeah really, really 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 good lots of sort of presents dropped off lots of comments lots of nice thoughts and, and, and comments so moment we're wearing gloves we're wearing aprons we're wearing masks and we're wearing either goggles or visors so yeah we're wearing a lot you know you think um must be a bit daunting for the residents although strangely enough they're getting used to us wearing it I mean, anything that comes through our front door is I spray with anti-bag and wipe it off. I constantly spray in door handles, spray in gate latches. You know, everyone's just so paranoid about getting this bug in, uh, get the virus in. And obviously we don't want to lose any residents. So, um, but Julie have been absolutely fantastic. Donna has been absolutely fantastic. All of the girls have been absolutely fantastic. Um, it's, it's just been, been phenomenal, phenomenal. Some huge alpine type. And we can now see the sunlight and the, the pasture ahead of us. And so it is vital that we do not now lose control and run slap into a second well, it's difficult for uh, for me to listen to Boris telling me that um, we can see the pasture, um, you know, over the peak, when the news in the last week has been absolutely catastrophic for care homes, and the amount of people dying in care homes has been rising and rising. So, uh, yes, while I welcome a little bit of positivity, I'm afraid that I think it's a little bit too early for me seeing any green pastures at the moment. Good morning. I've just woken up. It's um, Sunday morning. Feel pretty annihilated this morning. A really long day yesterday. Oh. Ah, I really struggled yesterday. I think I might today. Um, so yesterday was just, uh, we lost Casey in the morning. So we're down to nine. Uh, obviously, uh, puts extra pressure all the way around. Uh. So I um I had to work in the kitchen in the morning and also did the medications and took the temperatures. Um we had and then I did my temperature round and the thermometer broke and couldn't get that to work, so it took me a couple of hours by the time I'd sort of fiddled about with that. And I had to empty all the bins. Uh, all the clinical waste bins. 
uh, uh, rigging all the deliveries and spray them all down that were outside. Um, and then, yeah, so, so um, whilst doing the temperature round, another lady then was showed a temperature of 38.4 degrees. Uh, a poorly lady, you know, poorly lady, but again, as soon as that happened, we um, had to treat her as though she had COVID-19, so that's two. So luckily the courier hadn't arrived. Julie and I were planning to work the night shift uh, one night a week on Sunday night, which is tonight. But now, because Julie and I <sighs> were at the red team to just look after um, any one with, with or with suspected COVID-19, that meant that one of us would need to stay on days to do that. So Julie's going to do that. And I'm going to do two night shifts in a row. Yay! So I'm um, actually waking up as absolutely annihilated as I am now. I'm nailed to the bed. So I'm going to have a probably quite a busy morning this morning again, doing temperatures, medications, and various, various things. And I'm already looking forward to perhaps going to bed again this afternoon. For a couple of hours. Oh my goodness. I'm sure we'll be fine. Okay, better get up, I suppose, and get on with the day. Um, actually, really busy night last night. Very busy night. And I enjoy the night, I enjoy the actual job. It's just um, how tired you get the next day and then the next day. So, yeah, another night to do. So I take my hat off to the other night workers, especially Paula, who's been working six night shifts a week since we started this. And I'm in six night shifts where she's been probably quite busy all night. I think she's sleeping quite well in the day. Um, yeah, take my hat off. So, a little video, doesn't I? I'm not using my best. Right now, mm -hmm. so, so we, uh, what day is it today? Tuesday. Tuesday the 19th. So are we into our um, sixth week? Sixth yes. week now. No. Yes. Yes, we are. It's frightening how quick time has gone. It is. So how are you all feeling after <laughs> five, five weeks? Has it gone by quickly or slowly? Yes, it's, it's gone, gone by, by quickly. very quickly. Very mm. quickly, yes. Did you think we would um, get to five weeks? I never thought never. we would, no. I didn't, we, <laughs> I didn't think we'd get to three days. No, I, at the beginning, I didn't <laughs> think we were going to. I thought, well, this is it, we're going to be going home tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's so quite, um, amazing, because we've all settled in, haven't we, to our routines. Mm. Got, this, got a real system going, haven't we? Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've got your own room now, yeah. Jane, haven't you? Yeah. Oh, you have. You want, you'll have a moving in party. Obviously, oh. there's quite a, a worry about, I think, when we come out of this, it's going to be quite stressful yeah. in the working environment. In the working environment. Yeah, I think so, too. Because we're so used to... Well, everything's been done, isn't it, in here? We've got head and head to go about shopping. We're going out on public roads. Yeah. 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 Public, that's where you're in a little bubble. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Be yeah, yeah, we, we need to re educate ourselves mm -hmm, yes. a little bit. Mm. But um, I was on the news again today that since figures, you know, December or something like that, that there have been, I think, 11,000 care home deaths. Really? And that accounts for a quarter of all the, or over, just over a quarter of all the deaths mm. that have had COVID-19 yeah. 
on the death certificates. Wow, terrible, isn't it? I mean, it seems it seems to be all. It seems to be once it gets in somewhere, mm -hmm. it must travel around. Really, sort of, you know. And I was didn't so, notice it. A lot of the homes were homes that had a lot of agency going in and out. Different, yeah, different in. people every day. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Did you see that? I did, yeah. What, that have, have had problems? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah, a lot of agencies. Problems, yeah, a lot of agency use, yeah. Because they've been going in other homes as well, haven't they? Everyone's yeah. Into that yeah. One home. yeah. They've been going in other homes. The thing is, it was it came, came across so quickly, didn't it? It came along so quickly. It didn't sort of give you no. much chance to prepare. And it's just, I think, what we've done is bought ourselves a an opportunity to get to a safe platform yeah. to enable us to plan for the future yes. whatever the new kind of normal is yeah. I mean when we came in there was no there's no such thing as testing no, no. it wasn't available and I mean yeah. I know the two big things are sort of PPE and yeah. testing I mean yeah. in, to start with it's difficult because obviously being a private home, then yeah, we're responsible for getting our own PPE. But the, but I think the problem was that the government were actually detouring any PPE that was available to the frontline NHS. Yes. So it wasn't a it wasn't stuff that we normally use like masks. They just we never use them, do we? So and also they were just being pushed towards the NHS. So at least that seems to be seems to be a better supply of PPE now. And so there testing. Were, there were no guidelines at all, were there? For care homes. We, just before we came in, there was they no didn't plan. No. They didn't plan for it. They made a lot of plans for the NHS yes. dealing with it, but they yes. didn't. They whatever they say, they didn't know it was going to be. We kept looking, didn't we, to see what we were meant to be doing, but there was nothing out there. No, there wasn't. And, you know, there was, I know um, Boris is saying that they put care homes into lockdown a long time before everyone else, but they didn't. Yeah. That's an absolute yeah. load of rubbish. Yeah. We took the decision to stop visitors before when, yeah. when we thought it was the right time. Yeah. We were never told that, that we should do that. You just said it was a sensible thing to do. It never said it was, we have to do it, did it? No, 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 no. We just... Because I remember having a chat with Chris in Burnham, mm -hmm. and um, you know he he followed a few days later. Mm -hmm. I think we did it on the Wednesday, and he did it by about the Friday, you know. And then, um, as regard, you know, locking in again, there's no nope. guidance or no, you know, it's all our own. Mm -hmm. Which again, fair enough, isn't it? But it is. It, it, it's it's, sure. it's such a a massive thing, which except it affects so much of the population. You would. And being such a vulnerable sector, you would think that yeah. guidance, as we said, Donna, really. Yeah. yeah. So, how much longer do you reckon we um, need to go for them? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we're thinking probably a couple, couple of weeks. Yeah. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I am really. Yeah, I'm thinking. I, mm, I think so. Yeah. yeah, do you think you could? Another two years. Yeah. yeah. I think you've got to stay in power for another couple of weeks. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think so. I mean, I you know, I don't, I don't, I think it's difficult to to put an end date on, particularly. I mean, anything could happen, couldn't it? You know, we yeah. could lose two members of staff quite quickly, and that would, be it, really, that would it? change that it, would, wouldn't it? Yeah, that would be. Really but um, I, weeks. I would like to think, Have yeah, two weeks, so. two weeks. Two weeks and we and we might be at the safest place that we could be. Mm. You know, it might be at that level. Yeah. You know, and I think we're all working incredibly hard actually when you think now we're down to nine of us. Yeah. Mm. And we're still keeping going. Yeah. Well, if you think about it, so five weeks us thirty five days mm. and that's without a day off. Yeah. That's incredible, isn't it? it is, really? It is, yeah. Without a weekend off or, yeah. you know, nothing. I didn't, didn't even know now which is my weekend off. I don't even know which is mine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I forgot which is my weekend off. <laughs> and going forward well, after this, I mean, is there any sort of changes you think we should 
I mean, we have to make some sort of changes. We have to sort of sit and think about think it. About, yeah. Bringing the rest of the staff back in as well is going to be difficult, isn't it? It is. We really think about that one, haven't we? I mean, it's just, it's things that you don't, that you take for granted now, is that you don't have the... Oh, where's so and so? Oh, she's missed the bus again. Oh yes. <laughs> um, you know, well, we're really yet. short. Oh, I, you know, all those stresses, isn't there? Yeah. And nobody's running sick for the last five minutes. <laughs> I, th I thought about it. I have thought about it. Just go upstairs and wherever they are. Yeah. Which is actually <laughs> what Ju record. Julie was saying. So, uh, <laughs> where did you get that tile? So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are on uh, Courthouse, Courthouse, uh, Courthouse Radio. So, we've got with us Barbara James, who's 100 years old today. And I'm practicing to see whether I'd be any good as a reporter. Barbara, what's, what's, what's your views? Uh, I think you'd be an excellent reporter. Yes. Okay, okay. I think I need to think of some questions quite quickly, then, yes, don't you? you? I mean, think of a few um, so, um, how have things been uh, in Courthouse having the staff living here for the last five weeks, Barbara? Well, we've not been able to mix with anybody because it's been very nice. The weather's been lovely. We sit in the garden, and the staff are very kind, and so it's not at all bad. That's good to hear. Good to hear, Barbara. So, uh, we'll, um, anyway, so I'll let you enjoy um, your visit to the seaside. I see that. Uh, yeah, I'm just take put my hat on in a minute. The Kiss Me Quick hat, very nice. You're at, uh, at Cheddar Seafront at the moment. Yes. <laughs> so, you enjoy the rest of your day at the seafront, and I'm sure there'll be. Is it Friday? It's not Friday today, is it? No, it's not fish and chips today, is it? No, it's, it's tomorrow. Thursday, isn't it? Thursday today, yeah. So yes, yes. Anyway, this is Chris Dando, Cheddar Radio, over and out. <laughs> so, about... Um, no, I was going to see what your th thoughts were on the Dominic Cummings. Have you been watching the news Well, on I'm that? hearing snippets from the residents, to be honest, because that's the only place I get my information. That's bad planning, wasn't that kind of a cup of tea? Ah. So, I I mean, I'm, I get the gist. I'm get, I get the gist that his partner was showing potential symptoms of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. They have a four-year-old child. Mm-hmm. So he drove from his home in London to Durham. Durham. And then I get lost. I'm not quite sure what he then did with the child. I don't know where the child went. And I'm assuming they then came back to London, did they? I don't think so. I think they stayed there to self-isolate. So they oh, could they be stayed... near his parents. In what, case with he the needed... child? I don't, yeah, but well, I don't know whether the child went to the parents' house or to the... I mean, whatever he did. I mean, even the point we've got up to now is completely wrong. I think he should resign. He's got to. Immediately. Well, well, he hasn't. He hasn't, but he should because, I mean, the rest, of, you know, there's hundreds upon hundreds of families in exactly that situation. And because they did what they were told... Absolutely. They stayed where they were. Mm -hmm. So you can't have the chief advisor to the prime minister. No. I mean, they need to be an absolute total example. One hundred percent. Of course they not, do. Not suddenly um, look at the grey areas after the event yeah. and say, oh, well, you know. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, I mean, I'm not... Com I mean, the sacrifices that we've made to be away from our families. Exactly. Um is uh, uh you know and so to talk about Alison I mean we've had the conversation about whether her mum and dad could come over to help yes but because Boris told us not to yes we didn't yes but Ali's been sort of yeah near a near breakdown at some some yeah, point I don't doubt her and so should we have then used our apparently sort of um intuition and override what Boris said that we should do and should have just had them sent, sent over because that's basically what he's saying with 
yeah dominant yeah no and i mean I, do, I don't usually want to get political about it but i think this is i think it i think it's huge and i think it's wrong and i think as a role model to the to the country mm. in those positions he he ought to do the decent thing and resign or Boris Johnson. You should push him. I th- Absolutely. I don't know how he could stand there at the podium today and, and support See, I haven't him. even heard that, Christy. See, I haven't heard any of that. Well, they, they delayed... He's been, um, Dominic Cummings was at uh, Downing Street for sort of four or five hours. Well, I mean, that says a lot, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he was there that long, trying to work out a defence, and then... And Boris Johnson has defended Boris him. And Boris Johnson stood up and defended him. Really? Yeah, well, I've just woken up after my three hours sleep following uh, a night shift I did last night and um, so as you can see look at a bit rough around the edges about 90 and um, woke up to a tweet from my friend Chris to tell me that Western General Hospital has been closed from 8 o'clock this morning due to the high number of coronavirus cases. I'm absolutely gutted. It, Western is our local hospital. It's where any of our residents would go should they have um, an accident or emergency or other appointments. And also, it's the most likely place if we had any admissions, that's where they would come from. So, I was hoping or planning to break our lockdown possibly next week, as that would be seven weeks we've been in here. That is now looking quite unlikely. We had planned a senior strategy meeting this evening and I know that uh, Julie has for a while been <coughs> trying to push to extend that time to extend that date because she's a little bit scared about opening too early and I think this probably <laughs> is her trump card now to uh, to extend things um, my wife and little one were looking forward to the possibility of having me home next week and um, I, I have to say that's looking quite unlikely now um, I guess we just have to wait for a little bit more news as it as it comes out whether that just it means a general spike in coronavirus cases in the area I'm, I'm not not sure what that means does that mean all these holiday makers coming for the day bringing their filthy germs with them and, and then going home again well, um, I guess we'll find out uh, as, as the day as, as, as the week goes on I guess but um, <sighs> oh well I just I think we need to sort of have that senior meeting today um, I think obviously I'll start gauging the reaction of other members of staff I know there's quite a few members of staff that are feeling quite comfortable in the lockdown here and um, would probably be quite happy to extend it because they're they're sort of quite comfortable in this little bubble but uh, let's, uh, let's see how things go so this is uh, so this is my first day off not a day off really uh, I worked last night this is my first time doing a bit of sunbathing lying in the sun since I've been here so um, seven weeks 42 days so I think I deserved a couple of hours just lying in the sun but um, it's a shame I had to spoil it by listening to Dominic Cummings nonsense that he's just uh, spouted in his defense of driving to Durham uh, again as I've said before that we have all made huge sacrifices um, that's being 
locked in here with our residents for 42 days. Uh, that's not the sacrifice, it's being away from our families, being away from my wife and my child and my family and uh, the exceptional circumstances he talks about. Uh, my wife has been having a very, very difficult time at home with our four-year-old and uh, I've spoken to her many times in tears on the phone when it would have been lovely to uh, make the decision for Ali's mum and dad to drive from Bristol, move in. After all, they've been self-isolating themselves for seven weeks. Uh, Ali's been self-isolating for uh, even longer than that, actually, isn't it? So, um, and decided not to do it because the government told them not to. So, uh, yeah, very angry with um, Dominic Cummins. I think uh, it's an absolute load of twaddle. And um, again, as I said before, it's not a politically motivated uh, opinion. Just, just I feel that uh, people in his situation need to be whiter and white, they need to be transparent, they need to think about their actions uh, and the positions they're in. And um, I think he will um, end up having to resign over the next couple of days and uh, yeah, I don't wish anyone to lose their job but I think again uh, as one of the reporters said, y y when we get the track and trace system in place, people will be sort of notified and we'll be expecting people to stay at home. Stay at home, save lives. That's what they said. Um, and they want people to stay at home when they get a notification. Again, that for, for, for us here at Courthouse, we have... That's better. We have been in here for six weeks now, and before we came in, there was no testing at all. Now there's testing and no test and trace, which will be another step forward to hopefully isolating the cases and uh, being able to find out easily where it is and tr track it. Um, so, yeah, I get, Again, it means that, 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 you know, if we can hang on a little bit longer and this gets up and running, then it just feels like a much more safe environment to, to, um, to be working from. And um, I've absolutely no, di no doubt in my mind that we have done exactly the right thing. And I'm just so, so pleased that we've done what we've done, that we've locked in. Uh, it was a really the right decision, the right decision, and the right decision to stay for as long as we have. We were originally only thinking of staying for three weeks, maybe a month if we could. Now we're into week seven. We're almost definitely going to, to, to see the eight weeks out. Uh, Julie is talking about longer, but let's see. I mean, again, another week, another week and a half, and we will know a lot more. Um, obviously, we have been swayed a little bit by Western General Hospital, our local hospital, having closed due to the a surge in coronavirus, although... Um, Although there seems to be the thought from, from local people that uh, it's probably a case of the situation being poorly managed rather than anything else. But let's just give that time to come out in the wash. We'll see. But um, So the track and trace is um, yeah another positive step. Let's see how it goes. Well, you know, not only are we living in this wonderful, safe, bubble, bubble. <laughs> we're getting minimal amounts of like feedback about what's mm. going on out there so I just think that I just think we're going to be terrified actually I when we so. when we drive out of here for the first time oh, but I don't you can remember how to drive <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. And our well, I've got an automatic, so I'm fine. <laughs> 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 but I, I, I still, I know, I know you say that, but I, but we've still got a bit of control about your own behaviour, haven't you? So you're still, so while you'd be terrified, you still won't go into supermarkets and you still won't go to places where there's lots of people. So, so although I know what you mean, we'll be terrified, but you'll still have a control over what you do. Yeah, I think the fear is of other people. I have no issues with what I'm going to do and I can keep myself really, really safe. Um, but it's... It's what people other... around you. Well, because that? we know in here, you haven't got that fear, have no, you? Because no. nobody really risks picking that virus up from anyone or anywhere. Mm. It would be really rotten luck if we did. Yeah. Well, the only way... Uh, you know, as, as the guy said, would be through deliveries, that sort of thing, you know. Mm. Or, or an outside professional bringing it. That Which, would be yeah, the only... The most, yeah. yeah, that would be the only way. Mm. Mm. So, I just... I mean, I should... Good evening. Um, so, again, turned on Points West this evening. To see that Winscombe Hall, who are literally just up the road, have had several deaths, deaths from coronavirus and 30 staff have tested positive for coronavirus. 30 staff. There can't be much, many more than 30 staff working there, I wouldn't have thought. So they've had, um, as the... The, the the manager or owner said that it just ripped through the home. So we're obviously terrified again. Um, it seems that the situation out there is as bad or not worse than it has been locally. So, you know, after the sacrifices we've made for eight weeks, we feel as though we're almost back to square one again, which is... Quite scary. Uh, hope you know. Hopefully, it means that what we've done has been a positive. Well, it has been because nobody's nobody has tested positive yet, and um, we are now planning on. But it feels like you only just need one case to come in, and and that could still rip through. So, yeah. So we need to. Um, you know we've been living in a bit of a safe bubble um and we need to perhaps rethink um and i need to show the staff this television article um and, and just show them how serious this still is so you know we, we we may be with all the talk of lifting lockdowns and you know things getting back to normal in some ways, uh, you know the 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 coronavirus out there is as deadly now as it was at the beginning, and um, you know we need to treat it with contempt that it deserves. So uh, yeah, it just seemed to. Yeah, just seem to be com constantly flattened by the news day in, day out. Absolutely wearing, you know, stressful, wearing. Bloody nightmare. Absolute bloody nightmare. So I guess um, a lot of my videos seem to be taking place here in bed. It's, you know, perhaps one of the only few chances I get to sit down. Um, I'm actually working a night shift tonight. Um, I think we must be on, I don't know, day 55, something like that now. So very tired and um, had a lovely visit from um, my best friend who died a year ago, February. His wife and twin nine-year-old girls and uh, sister-in-law Laura, who's a very good friend of mine, came down 
to Cheddar to visit and um, stood obviously over the other side of the wall and a couple of meters or so away and um, yeah it's lovely to see them really 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 made my day haven't seen them for over three months so amazing yeah yeah absolutely love them love them to bits um interesting day today um lynn our night girl i had to go home her sister has been looking after her dogs or dog and cats she had been expecting to do this for a couple of weeks when we came in in the first place obviously eight weeks later um and um yeah lynn's sister i think lost her husband not much over a year ago so i think mentally is really really struggling uh, so she is going to go home lynn is going to actually continue working six nights a week certainly for the next week or so and um so gonna just literally be going home and back into work home back into work uh, the only time she would stop is to get some petrol so so pretty safe but um yeah so it is um a bit of a change from our usual plans so um anyway i think i'm gonna go to sleep now because um on the night shift tonight so good night speak later okay it's mega hot today 30 over 30 degrees roasting especially wearing these sorry i shouldn't have touched that but it's absolutely roasting so just going on the uh somerset safeguarding adults board coronavirus website uh so we've had a lady with a temperature so uh you know we're, we're testing for your own infection but obviously we can't take any chances so we're treating it as though it could be covid19 so i'm just about to book a courier for tomorrow which i am gonna do and um from there we will then hopefully get the test done tomorrow because you can only book it book the courier for seven o'clock the night before so obviously we didn't know about it until yeah, about, probably about eight o'clock last night that we had this temperature so um still you know still waiting on some results so we're you know i want to test the staff weekly because I'm hearing stories about homes having asymptomatic staff and um, I just think weekly is not too much to ask. I mean last time we had the test results back within less than 24 hours, a lot less than 24 hours, you know if that's a consistent thing that is great. I do have an issue with the fact that um, uh, hell, I do have an issue with the fact that although we've had one full home testing pack come through it only allows you to test everyone once a month 28 days but even then actually it's way way past 28 days and it still won't let me uh, request any more so I'm hearing stories that people are having to be creative, if you like, and having to find different ways of getting their staff tested, you know, getting home testing kits. Excuse my language, it's a load of bollocks. You know, all the press that the care homes have had and all the deaths in care homes, they should let everybody have everything that they want as regards testing. You know, it, it does make my blood boil. You know, if we think it would be better to test everyone once a week, they need to find a way how that happens. So, um, sorry, I don't get very angry very often, but um, this makes me angry. This really, really does make me angry. The sacrifices my staff have made. They've been in here, living in here, 
away from their families for you know over 70 days nearly 11 11 weeks and um you know i'm sorry but it's, it's just not good enough it's not good enough okay rant over i better get on